96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in. 96 AM here on Telegraph Hill, and it is the final Tuesday in the month of February, and that means it's time once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services, our chance to check in with our area law enforcement leaders. AJ Brammer here in the studio, joined by Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor and Jefferson County Sheriff Dave Thomas. So, Chief and Sheriff, thank you guys for coming on the program. Thanks for having us here. Thank you for tuning in. So, as we uh, kick off the program, uh, Chief Taylor, what's new at the Hanover Police Department? Uh, oh, a couple of the various things that we've had uh, recently. Our school resource officer, James Hackney, just completed the five days of training that's spread out over a couple months for school resource officer. They go to the Indiana School Safety Specialist Academy, uh, where they talk about various different topics. They look at lessons learned from other tragedies, and then also just look at other implementation of items that have been put in place that weren't necessarily because of a tragedy but it was being on the proactive side for doing that and I believe um, Special Deputy Tim, Tim Armstrong, Armstrong he also completed that training yesterday for Jefferson County and Madison School District that's definitely a valuable training especially for our school resource officers oh, it's very enlightening uh, in the classes there the their school administrators also there are uh, various different levels of uh, state local county uh, even federal partners in the law enforcement realm that go to those prosecutors it's a broad uh, spectrum of a collective of individuals that are looking f towards just making the school systems uh, safer and also just trying to make our community safer because a lot of this information that we learned there they also bleed over to workplace safety the uh, church safety just environmental safety for businesses or um, like our factories there's things that we could go and uh, use and learn from there to give suggestions to everyone so it's it's one of those free trainings that the government puts on department of justice um, it's intensive for having to go through all those and there's yearly um, re-education or continuing education that we have to do with it but it's it's really beneficial to the whole community because it makes us think outside of the box and it'll take something that doesn't work in Indianapolis but could work in our small communities here vice versa our small communities may give a uh, um, information that doesn't necessarily work at the larger schools but uh, it allows us to have input that flows up and down throughout the whole state and it's that sort of training that I think that um obviously you never want to see that training have to be utilized but if you don't have that you're definitely going to regret it when the opportunity presents itself well it's something you have to do you have to train in hopes that you don't have to use it but it's there if it's needed so and things that and other topics and during the advanced um, one of my former officers they now work up at Columbus Police Department uh, from when I worked at Vincent University uh, Julie Quisenberry uh, she's put together a program for Columbus school systems up there where they bring in students the female students uh, the high school seniors that are getting ready to go off for uh, college tours in different areas and so there they talk about safeties on campus they talk about women's self-defense they talk about just situational awareness things that going in from a high school senior into a college freshman isn't something that normally typically approached by a school system or law enforcement typically you wait until you get on college campus and then give that to the college freshman instead um, she's pioneered a program for the state of Indiana trying to get high school uh, seniors ready for college freshmen instead of waiting until once they're there she's trying to prep them and let them know ahead of time right the importance I think with that uh, in from working at Hanover College for 11 years myself, uh, it becomes a, a uh, not a, re you don't want to say it's redundant, but it becomes, they've initially got to at the school and now it's reinforced when they come to the college environment, uh, which is, I think is probably a very important thing for all students involved. Certainly, no, so it's, it's exciting to see that initial training develop into these other programs is definitely exciting and good to see our local officers participating 
And so when we talk about the school safety academies, it's just not on the tragedies of the school shootings. It's more or less giving learning about programs to give back to our communities and just life building skills that we can share with young adults. And it's going to be skills that they'll use uh, throughout their life. Uh, you know, in a whole part of just general safety in your environment and your communities. Certainly. So, uh, Sheriff, what's new at the Sheriff's Department? Well, uh, we have, uh, we're having a couple of deputies leave. Uh, uh, Josh Cochran is going to uh, Dearborn County Sheriff's Department, uh, and Brad Demery is going to Madison. Uh, city police department so we now have two openings that we are uh, accepting applications for uh, the deadline for that application the applications themselves is March the 8th uh, and uh, you can go to the sheriff's office our main office downtown at the jail and pick up the applications just go into the lobby there and we're looking forward to having individuals who are interested in getting into the law enforcement field and the opportunity is now there. Uh, Sheriff, for those that are interested, they have to be 21 years old and a GED or a high school diploma. That's correct. So that's the minimum education required. Um, then also just a, a driving a, record that's a valid license. All that's required and they'll also have to go through a uh, physical agility testing and then a uh, generalized test uh, for just your ability to uh, break down and deduce what you know what's going on in your community uh, and th those dates I don't have them written down but uh, they'll be shortly after a week or two after March the deadline for the applications uh, with those those type of testings are similar AJ to what we would do for any of the agencies so those that are listening or know somebody that's looking to get into law enforcement uh, even if you apply here at Jefferson County and you weren't selected it'd be a great opportunity because it would be a similar process that would be used nationwide um, so if you have any inkling or have family members that are uh, have a desire to be in law enforcement uh, this would be a great opportunity to start getting out there because if you don't get accepted the first time practice makes perfect and gives you an edge on the next person who's applying for the first time yeah, I know you guys can both attest to the fact that it's it's a rewarding industry yes yes it is very much so, so and definitely uh, we want to want good motivated people uh, on our area uh, represent our area law enforcement but uh, it's definitely a, they're, they're joining a good team as well right yes. right uh, another thing that has occurred in the last couple of weeks uh, we had our uh, our, we call it the REC Outreach Program, which is a national program. It uh, stands for Residents Encounter Christ. And uh, our male population uh, attended that. Of course, it's done inside the jail. Uh, did that on February the 16th and 17th. And uh, probably, um, I don't know, 60 70 inmates participated in that male inmates and then the women participated uh, pretty much all of them uh, on the 23rd and 24th uh, and again it's an outreach that comes in and um, it's just the the whole uh, church kind of scheme uh, they play music and they have uh, innovative people come in who speak to the, the groups and you know and that type of thing so uh, we're pretty proud of that program and uh, uh, Scott Copeland is the uh, person who runs that and we want to thank him for everything they did uh, I think it brings a lot to the inmates and uh, we look forward to doing that it, we do it uh, I believe it's twice a year we do it once in the spring once in the fall so again a, a nice program to bring in and uh, try to change lives so yeah, I think those those programs you know that are available in the jail they definitely go a long way you know for the, for the inmates just not i mean not only improving you know i guess improving morale right but like you said it's you know preparing them for when they you know re-enter society very important very important it gives them something to anchor on to or look forward to as far as a privilege inside uh, corrections because i mean 
the confinement there, they're there as a punishment, but also giving them something potentially to look forward to or interaction outside of their normal routine, but also making a connection uh, with whatever type of program it is for the outside so they have something to keep them from maybe reverting to the criminal ways. We always like to see our area law enforcement work together, and this is something I know you guys are working on a program right now that's going to benefit everybody, all of our law enforcement in the area. That's correct. Um, Madison Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, and Hanover uh, Police Department are working with a 401c3 nonprofit, Bolt for Life, and they approached us. Uh, a student from Hanover College had participated or became familiar with the organization during uh, some fundraiser events up in uh, Hamilton County area of Indiana, just north of Indianapolis. But their goal originally was to implement or help issue. AEDs, the automatic uh, external defibrillators, uh, to put those in each police car in uh, state police hands. They've now moved to trying to go to rural communities, and their goal is to try and equip every police car in the state of Indiana with those. They've issued them out to state police, several counties um, in Indiana, Warwick County, Evansville Police Department area, Hamilton County. Um, no, I'm trying to think what there's another one up north, Benton County, Newton County area. They've partnered with those counties to provide or fundraise for them. Um, and by having AEDs out in the field, law enforcement may be on the scene prior to EMS arrival. If we have one in our car, when we go inside, we're able to carry that to the medical emergency. Our officers have to be trained in AP, uh, CPR, AED, first aid, uh, basic life-saving skills, uh, one, to benefit us if we become injured, but also, two, to go and pay that back to the public as a first responder. So having that instrument uh, on board with us would greatly benefit us. Yeah, I think the research shows that uh, law enforcement responding uh, to those type of incidents generally arrive on scene about two or three minutes before the EMS personnel. So it would be extremely beneficial to be able to already start setting something up like that um, when you know trying to save a life. Um, the, the program itself is a fundraiser. Uh, and, and I think we're going to have a, was it a 5K run? 5K run. There'll be a 5K run involved in it, but we're also going to try and get some corporate sponsorships uh, to purchase these. And a part of that is if, we, if, if the corporation wants to get involved, we're actually going to put a sticker on the patrol cars that indicates that they have donated, you know, to this. So it's something we're looking forward to. If there are potential sponsors out there, anybody that you may know want to donate um, with those, as uh, the sheriff had mentioned, it would have your business uh, name or logo on there. Uh, this patrol car has an AED provided by that company there as a corporate sponsorship, but also just with the proceeds from a 5K run or just a $5 donation would go towards that for us. Um, they have an iron out exactly which each of the details for but they also talked about uh, the window sticker decals trying to sell those for people saying I support the, this project to get the information out in the community so it's a you know not only cross department but cross community as well so yes. right. and uh, I know I've seen um, when the state police post number sales they have participated in the past right. before too so right. that's you know exciting to see that expand to uh, local communities as well Yes, it'd be very fortunate because once we were approached, what was it, November, December, yes. asking us about it and having our initial meetings, uh, I've been on five medical calls, three of which that I can go and say 100%. I wish I had an AD, AED with me at those times because they were cardiac arrest. Um, 100% true blue uh, medical emergency that way then we've also had a couple others that were dispatched out as potential cardiac arrest or um, heart related uh, emergencies that even if we had it there we would have uh, administered or applied it to the person uh, because those instruments can diagnose or diagnose and say yes a shock is advised no it isn't they it can it's a heart monitor and it would be able to go and give medical personnel trained responders information as it's going on 
yeah, definitely a tremendous program and looking forward to uh so and uh, do we have a date for the 5k or you know still working on the details We're, they're still working on the details right. on that well, uh there's a lot of races in this community yes, when there you are. get into spring and summer so we're trying to work that in so no we'll definitely uh, keep an eye out for that information and uh well we'll probably have it on the next cop talk as well yes we probably will and then i know um another one uh that we are seeing some cross department collaboration on um is the no it's obey the sun or pay the fine there it is uh it's a the sheriff's department in hanover college are going to uh participate in this with about 230 other police agencies across indiana and what it is is it's a uh, traffic patrol that looks for aggressive driving uh bad passes unsafe speed uh, speed too fast for weather conditions, uh, those type of violations. So uh, we're just letting the public know you need to, you know, drive safely, and and we're going to be out there enforcing these laws. The campaign efforts is from March 1st to March 24th of 2019. As the sheriff said, they're looking for aggressive driving behaviors. We routinely get phone calls into dispatch talking about people driving aggressively, passing on double yellow lines, um, and then we go to the area and respond to those. Um, our normal patrols, we do look for those type of aggressive behaviors uh, to begin with, but during this time there'll be a ramped up enforcement of specifically those type of violations. You know, it's a um, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and then the you know, Criminal Justice Institute, you right. know, paying you know, grant money allowing for these expanded patrols. Um, I know it mentions in the press release that, you know, it's that time of year where, you know, the snow's starting to melt, so people are getting a little more excited to be out on the roadways, but it's just a matter of, you know, getting in the habit now of, you know, safe again driving out there safe correct i mean if they start thinking about it now before they uh head out into the vacation season the holidays of uh the events that typically uh bring in lots of individuals here to jefferson county downtown madison uh where we see the increased traffic for all of our events trying to get everybody to think about it now and be patient plan accordingly and not be aggressive and uh sheriff thomas i know um it's the for a long time the recurring rhetoric on this program is you know the status of the jefferson county jail um for folks that want more information they're going to have a couple opportunities to get more information on where we're at with that process yes we're going to have two public meetings uh to discuss information about the jail uh the first is going to be actually tomorrow wednesday february 27th at 6 p.m and that'll be held at ivy tech uh, community college and then the second will be held friday march 1st at 6 p.m at southwestern auxiliary gymnasium so you want to hear about the jail you have questions about the jail just you know th these are your opportunities to get out right Bye. Did I not have the mic up there? You had it on, oh, you just didn't have it quite close <laughs> enough, but I think we got you on there. Okay. But can you throw those dates out one more time just in case? <laughs> the, two date, the two dates are uh, tomorrow, February 27th at 6 p.m., Ivy Tech Community College, and then the second will be Friday, March 1st at 6 p.m. at Southwestern Auxiliary Gymnasium. Uh, that came at the request of the um, the Jefferson County Council, you know, just wanting... And the commissioners. And yes. the commissioners as well, yeah, just wanting um, you know people to see where we stand and see uh, where we're going with that and obviously you know that's a it's a big issue that's going to impact all of us so definitely a good opportunity to get that information trying to get it all out there and uh, see what our community thinks about it and you know one we want them to be well informed with what's going on in the community definitely uh, chief taylor as we come up on the end of the program is there anything else you'd like to add uh, and for those that don't know where the auxiliary gym is it's behind <clears throat> the high school uh, on the back side of it close to the track that's the laura bouldry centered there it's got the new uh, exterior finish on that so if people are trying to figure out where it is just drive into the high school parking lot and go to the back corner of it and you'll see where it there yeah. and you'll add sheriff thomas no, i think that's about it we appreciate the opportunity to come on and and uh talk to people and and looking forward to the next one we definitely always appreciate you guys being here so we, we will see you guys next month